Hey YouTube, what you know good? He is the Reverend, this is Project KM, and we're back with some more of that fresh art goodness. So, what are we working on today? Well, today we're working on day 13 and drawing 13 for OC Tober 2020, where I did OCs of, uh, illustrations of OCs of my own, as well as some OCs of my fellow artists and some comrades of mine. Today is another illustration of my own. And this is continuing where we left off for drawing number 12 with a character from the store, from the fan fiction story that I was uh, writing for the Monster Girl Encyclopedia. This one is actually, instead of the, 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 instead of the main character, this time this, we're going to draw one of the main monsters that he ends up running into. What happens um, during the time of the story where she shows up is that our, our MC, who has been evading the, a particular king and trying to avoid being executed for, you know, taking out someone in self-defense, <clears throat> he's currently hiding in a particular village where monsters and humans are apparently able to coexist peacefully. Unfortunately for him, he's coming across certain rumors and gossip about this supposed hero slayer. So he's currently hiding in a shelter, uh, in an inn for shelter for a few days while before he, you know, continues on his travels. However, it doesn't take long for one of the monsters to realize that he's that particular guy, that he's supposed to be that hero slayer. And that monster is actually uh, the one who works the front desk. A lizard man monster known as Emelyn, who tries to keep herself as professional as possible while she's in the middle of working, etc, etc. And eventually, while our boy is just trying to have some lunch, she uh, heads over to the dining hall, finds him, and asks him, if he was too busy because she actually has a little bit of a request for him her work shift ends a few hours after the little conversation she wants to she wants him to accompany her to the village square but she doesn't exactly explain why in fact she didn't really give him an answer I mean give him a chance to answer her she says she has requests actually tells what she wants to do and then just kind of bows and walks off it all makes sense though, uh, once the residents of the village who are also eating there hear all that, and they all, they're all just giving these stares and, well, they look kind of apologetic about it. Eventually, one guy, specifically like a, like a guy covered in bandages and whatnot, just really messed up, explains what's going on. Being a lizardman from the MGE, Emlyn has a very strong fighting spirit and is constantly looking to fight strong warriors. She was able to realize that our boy Nuka clearly is strong and she's basically dragging him over to the village square to fight him. Now a lot of humans in that village are willing to have fights with monsters just for, you know, for fun and to get a feel of what it's like back when monsters were monsters and they were constantly trying to, you know, humans and monsters were constantly trying, trying to kill each other. But it's no fun fighting Emelyn because she doesn't hold back and she just hurts people. So, um, needless to say, Everyone's pretty sure that our boy Nuka is not going to do well. So the illustration I'm drawing is what happens right before the fight. She knocks on his door when he, a few hours later. He's already prepared himself, thanks to everyone telling him. He you know, sets himself up, he gets a plan. When he opens the door, she's out of her formal dress, out of her work clothes, and is wearing her armor. Now she's looking, instead of cheer, instead of slightly cheerful and professional looking, as you know, someone you'd be, you would expect to be at like the front desk. She looks, she looks like she's ready to tear his face off right then and there. So, 
they take they get to the town square and this is the this is what I was trying to draw in this particular illustration where she whips out the sword thrusts it at him and introduces herself by her name her current undefeated streak and officially challenges him to a battle even though at this point it's not even a challenge it's more like an ultimatum it's like she's got the sword out you either fight or she's probably gonna take your dang on head off Thankfully, I didn't decide that the main character is going to die only after the first couple of chapters of this story, so needless to say, he doesn't die. It's, uh, I'll spare you the details on the actual fight in and of itself. Uh, what I will say, it's like, imagine someone with a humongous, like, a humongous bastard sword versus a speedster with some twin blades. Uh, if anything, it's like, uh, hmm, if I could, I'm probably aging myself, but imagine if Kite and Black Rose from Dot Hack end up fighting each other, like legit trying to kill each other, or hmm, maybe something, maybe something people might recognize because one of the recent games will come out. Imagine hmm, Siegfried versus Taki from Soul Calibur. It's kind of like that. Our boy's got short swords, uh, well, short blades, and he's fast, while Emlyn is huge, she's got a huge sword, and being a lizardman, she is strong as hell, and can just whip that sword around like it's nobody's business. Um, you, know, they, you know, they say styles make fights, so I tried to write a fight where it could have gone either way, but it's a case of how is Nuka going to survive getting you know that giant sword swinging again and again and just coming at him like a dang or a tornado from someone who doesn't look like they could wield that sword, but being a monster she can. And what is Emily gonna have to do to stop Nuka from moving around so she, she can actually hit him and prevent him from getting in to getting in too close to get it with those short blades? What I will say is by the end of the fight, she she kind of drops that vicious, that vicious like killer face and uh, she will eventually admit that she not only recognized that he was the person who uh, apparently slay, slayed a hero, but she also could tell that he is from the that rare breed of human uh, known as the Black Fang. Back in the previous video I talked about how he was part of a, a group of hunters, uh, nomadic drifters, who were known throughout the generations as hunting monsters and doing jobs as mercenaries and whatnot, and he's supposed to be like one of the last few that are of the Black Fang that haven't been either taken by a monster or turned into a monster. So the idea that Emlyn knows about the Black Fang means either she's done a lot of research, or maybe she's come across a few, come across a few in her time, and maybe even killed a few. Um, I haven't gotten to so far in the story where she actually explains this. What I will say though is that by the time I stopped writing the story, because I had to stop, I got way too busy. She ended up uh, running into Nuka again, and honestly. What I think I'm going to do is that these two are going to be doing a little traveling together. Um, because Nuka is going to have not just to worry about monsters, but he's got one of the head knights of the kingdom after his ass. Because not only did he kill uh, one of the church's designated quote unquote heroes, uh, but that knight who's after him. Well, that night that Nuka killed was the the guy. It was the best friend of the guy who's chasing him now. So he's pretty pissed about it. So I got this idea. If we have these two uh, travel together, team up a little bit, it'll be an interesting little dynamic for fighting, um, as well as you know the some comedic banter. Because if you know anything about a lizard man. Uh, once they, or any, almost any monster in the MGE, once they have their sights set on you, they don't just quit. 
they don't just give up on it. So the question is, it, it, it's it's the I think maybe it's going to be that that idea of the whole will they won't they. Uh, or what's it's gonna take for him to get away from her kind of situation while he continues his journey. Um, and as and as I uh, as I write down the actual story, he's gonna have to be careful. He's got a very bad feeling things are about to get weird. And if if the story if I remember exactly how I wanted that story to end up, yeah, it's gonna get weird. Anyway. Um, that was the gist of it when it comes to what I was drawing for this one, and I'm going to go ahead and just call it here. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. So, as always, thanks for watching. Take, take it easy. Memento Mori, and I will catch you all in the next one. Kill the feed.